Hello uh, and welcome. The Code for Sustainable Homes is broken down into nine chapters. This programme looks at chapter or category four, surface water runoff. With the floods of 2009 still clear in our minds, this topic is of real practical importance. With me to draw out some of the technical information as well as some of the wider issues at stake, I'm joined by two highly experienced commentators on the subject. Constantine or Costa Tonaros is the technical director of Sintegra Consulting and for the purposes of this program he is a Code for Sustainable Homes Assessor but he's also a qualified engineer specializing in renewable energy systems focusing on hydropower, sustainability and energy policy. Casper Hewitt is an environmental consultant with over 12 years research experience in water resources. He is the director of the Great Debate, visiting fellow at the Sir Joseph Swan Institute for Energy Research and is on the steering group for the United Nations University Regional Centre of Expertise in Education for Sustainable Development in the North East. Welcome to you both gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming in. Now just to say that the Code for Sustainable Homes chapter on surface water runoff was published in the technical guidance in March 2009 and it's already under review. So this program will look at the technical information on surface water runoff as it stands at the moment, the consultation issues and the benefits and drawbacks of SUDS itself. So, again, thank you again. Can I come to you first, Costa, if you don't mind? Just in terms of um, the Code for Sustainable Homes chapter, um, it actually says, uh, in the existing document, says it aims to avoid, reduce and delay the discharge of rainfall to public sewers and watercourses. Yet the consultation says exactly the same sentence, but at the end it adds on by SUDS methods. So is there any clear distinction between this kind of minor, minor change to the wording? Well, actually, previously the Code of Sustainable Homes set the criteria in order to achieve all the goals that you previously mentioned. But now, it doesn't only set the criteria, but also sets the guidelines in order to achieve these goals in a sustainable manner by using sustainable drainage techniques and systems for... Well, can you... Because, I mean, one of the methods it talks about, or one of the overall kind of um, frameworks it looks at, is this kind of SUDS management train, a kind of weird phrase. Can you just explain what that means or what that entails? Well, basically, SUDS management train is a design concept that uses drainage techniques linked in series in order to incrementally reduce the volume the frequency of the flow rate, the frequency of, of uh, runoff water and the pollution in, from runoff water. And the main stages of the design concept are the prevention, the source control, the site, co the site control and the regional control. Okay. Well, Casper, I gather that, you know, even though SUDS is kind of taking off a pace, everyone's talking about it, there's the documents uh, left, right and centre, you're a little bit more circumspect about SUDS itself. Well, yeah, I mean, I do think it's slightly problematic. I mean, the suggestion is that the approach is dynamic and flexible, but actually it seems to me that uh, there are unnecessary constraints placed on, on design through this approach. In particular, having to deal with everything locally, returning water to, local, uh, to water courses locally, um, and treating water locally. Now that's very reasonable in some circumstances, but in some circumstances it really doesn't make sense. I mean, for example, um, treat water treatment, it often makes much more sense to um, treat large volumes of water in, in one site, especially in an urban situation, than to try and treat it locally. So what, what, in a rural situation, you think this is more appropriate? Oh, certainly, yes. I mean, I've worked on schemes on farms and so on, and there it makes much more sense. You're sort of putting interventions on, in the landscape where you can actually treat water locally using wetlands and this sort of thing. But if you're building a housing estate, th those sorts of approaches don't really make sense. Well, I hit a break at you, but SUD stands for Sustainable Urban Drainage. <laughs> well, this is the big new urban that, idea. <laughs> so, um, again, you know, do you not think that this has got something going for it? Um, in certain circumstances, I do actually think it's quite problematic, though. I mean, you know, sometimes it makes more sense, um, for example, to um, take large volumes of water away from...